Hey everyone, it's Brennan Klaus, your favorite Seattle area realtor. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are talking all about the pros and cons of Seattle, Washington, yours truly. If you don't know anything about me, my name is Brennan. I left Microsoft years ago to have a more direct impact on people's lives by helping them build wealth through real estate. I'm super happy you're here today. And today we're talking about the pros and cons of living in Seattle. I myself have lived in Seattle for the past 10 years, absolutely love the city, but I'll be the first to admit there are definitely pros and cons to living in the city. So I'm going to deliver to you today that list of the pros and the cons so you know exactly what to expect. Let's start with the positive. Today we're going to start with the pros of living in Seattle. The first pro is the outdoor activities in Seattle. Obviously Seattle is known for its access to nature, both the mountains and the water. We have a beautiful lush green landscape, which is revered by many people across the country because of how amazing it is. Not many cities have this much access to outdoor activities. Just to give you an example, there are over 100 lakes in King County alone, which is the county that Seattle is in. There's over 175 miles of leaf line trails and 215 miles of backcountry trails. There's also 20 ski resorts in Washington alone. So unlike those other cities where you might be in Denver or might be in Utah, Seattle has super great access to these outdoor activities. Not to mention you can go down to the lake, Lake Union, which is where I like to go. You can access biking trails, running trails, walking trails. We have the Burke Gilman. You can also get out onto the sound. If you wanna go out on a boat, you can also access Lake Washington. There's a ton of outdoor activities to do right here in the middle of the city. I often just even Uber to Lake Union if we're going on a boat and get on a boat and spend the afternoon there. It's super easy. You could drive there. You could walk there. You could bike there. It's super accessible to get to if you just want an afternoon outside. So number one pro is definitely the access to outdoor activities. Number two is in Seattle, you get mild weather with access to definitely all four seasons. So as with any other city, Seattle summer is absolutely beautiful. You'll find that we have the most amazing summer. It typically starts around July, maybe June if you're lucky. It goes through September, about October. We have the most amazing mild weather. It doesn't get too hot in Seattle. I think it gets typically around the 80s, maybe upper 80s, and it doesn't usually go below freezing in Seattle. Now, there are a couple one-offs, a little bit of variation where you do need maybe air conditioning for a week or two in the summer, but in the winter, you typically don't see a lot of snow. We may get snow one time per year, if that. So there's not a ton of variation in the weather. It's pretty mild. Now that said, you do get the rain, of course. There's definitely rain in Seattle. That's what it's known for, but you definitely have more mild weather. The highest temperature that has been recorded has actually been 108 degrees, but it's rare that it gets above 100 degrees. You also have all four distinct seasons. So in Seattle, you have a very pretty fall season where you get a lot of the leaves changing colors. It's really beautiful because we have so much greenery. And then in the summer, you obviously have the nice, warm, sunny weather, a lot less rainy. We do have winter. It does get cold, not typically freezing, but it'll get cold and rarely we see snow. Know. And then you definitely have the springtime. You have spring showers followed by a nice spring season. So you definitely get access to all four of those seasons. Now the next pro of Seattle is Washington is a great state for business. According to CNBC, it's ranked number two out of the country. It's a second state for business because of the economy and specifically innovation and technology. Seattle has a lot of different industries, a lot of different technology. Not only do we have tech like Amazon, Microsoft, Meta, or Facebook, but we also have places like Tableau. We also have Boeing. We also have Starbucks. There's a lot of different headquarters in Seattle. So it's a great place for business. No state income tax, which is amazing for individuals or if you're an entrepreneur like myself, that can be really great as well because your income is not taxable. So it's a great state for business. 
business, number two in the country for business. Last and certainly not least, Seattle is amazing if you're interested in pro sports teams. We have a ton of sports in Seattle. It is a major hub of the city. We have amazing teams and amazing facilities. So you'll see like Seahawks, Kraken, Sounders for soccer, the Mariners, the Seattle Storm, and then we have a plethora of college teams as well. We have Lumen Field, that's amazing. Climate Pledge Arena just got redone by Amazon and it is state of the art. It's really spectacular inside. It's definitely not one that you want to miss. So the sports teams in Seattle are really popular. It's a really great place for pro sports if you like to spend your time watching that. And those are all super accessible inside the city. So Lumen Field is just south of the city, right in the neighborhood of sort of Pioneer Square or Soto, south of downtown. And then Climate Pledge Arena is right at the base of Queen Anne or near Seattle Center, people would call it, sort of on the edge of Belltown and Queen Anne. So both are really accessible. If you're already in the city, you can easily get to them by walking. You can take public transit. Super easy stadiums to get to and really easy access to those facilities. Okay, so now let's get to the cons of living in Seattle. And like I said, I'm the first to admit that Seattle is not perfect, but there are amazing things about it. But you do have some cons that you have to deal with. Now first, one of the pros was the mild weather, but you still have that rain. So the first con can be the weather. So typically you're going to need to gear up. You're gonna to need to get your raincoat ready because there are a lot of days of rain. Now it's not typically a downpour, but a lot of misty days. So you won't typically see a lot of people with umbrellas because it's usually not pouring rain. That's more rare, but you will see days where there's a lot of mist and especially a lot of gray in the mornings where it gets a little sunnier in the afternoon. There are specifically a lot of cloudy days, but compared to the national average, Seattle is not that bad in terms of sunshiny days as well as rainy days. So don't let that damper your opinion. It is more widely talked about than it actually is a reality. Obviously, if you have a pet like me, I have a dog, going out in the rain for walks can be difficult, but you get the right gear, you get the raincoat, you get your dog a raincoat, and you will be fine. Now, the second con of living in Seattle is the cost of living. Seattle is comparable to other large cities like LA and New York in terms of the cost of living. Seattle's index was about 145.7. It's far below the highest, which is Manhattan in New York, which had an index of 227.8, but it's only slightly behind LA, which had an index of 147.3 in terms of cost of living. So it is right up there with LA and trails behind New York quite a bit, but it is a high cost of living. It also trails behind places like Honolulu, Hawaii, San Jose, California, San Francisco, Brooklyn, New York, Orange County, as well as Boston. So slightly less than some of those other big cities, but there is a high cost of living. The median home price in Seattle is higher than a lot of other cities that you might move from. But if you're someone in California where a lot of people come from to come to Seattle, you will realize that it's a little less costly to live in Seattle than it is places like California or Manhattan, New York. So it is a big city type of cost of living. And unfortunately that goes with the great place to do business as well as the no state income tax. So can be a little bit higher typically when you're going out to restaurants or doing activities, you are also seeing that cost reflected in that high cost of living. So definitely a place where you are going to spend to live, but I think it is worth it. In terms of the cost of living, Seattle also trails places like San Diego, Queens, New York, Washington DC, as well as Oakland. So there are cities that are more expensive. It's slightly less expensive than some of these that I've mentioned here. Okay, the third con of living in Seattle is definitely the traffic and the parking. Just like some of those bigger cities we talked about living in that have a high cost of living, there is a lot of traffic in Seattle, especially if you're going from Seattle to the east side like Bellevue, Redmond, Kirkland, going over to Microsoft or some of the tech hubs in Bellevue, you have two options. You have the 520 floating bridge or the I-90 bridge. They are building transit across I-90 with the light rail, which should be opening soon. So you have an option to not commute in the traffic 
traffic, but there are definitely rush hours. It helped a little bit with the pandemic, but the rush hours still exist to this day. Seattle also has a lot of transit options. We have ferries, we have water taxis, we have buses, we have trains, we have the light rail, we have the monorail downtown. There's also a lot of cruise ships coming into Seattle to the port when they're going on cruises either up and down the coast or all the way up to Alaska. So there is a lot of activity, there's tourism, there's certainly people driving all over. I mentioned before the stadium like Climate Pledge Arena, definitely going and coming from Climate Pledge in traffic can be difficult. So definitely the traffic is difficult. Now parking is also difficult in Seattle. If you're parking downtown, it can cost anywhere from $200 to $300 a month. If you want a monthly pass, parking is hard to find. It's not easy. There are a lot of parking garages. There is street parking in some of the neighborhoods outside of downtown Seattle, but you are going to pay to park in those places. So it is definitely expensive. I tell clients, you know, if you are looking for a condo with a parking spot downtown, plan to pay anywhere from $50,000 to $100,000 for that parking spot, depending on if it has electric vehicle charging as well. So parking is definitely something that is difficult to find in the city. Fourth and finally, the con of living in Seattle. You probably guessed when this was coming, but it is the Seattle freeze. So the Seattle freeze is probably well known across the country as a way or a culture, you know, they say like the rain keeps everyone inside and it's really hard to make friends. I will say that the Seattle freeze is probably real. It's hard to overcome, but the key is to really find one or two friend groups or colleagues or coworkers that you can get in with and get into an existing group of people that know each other. It is difficult and it can be tricky if you don't have that. So my advice would be to network at things you like to do, make sure you're getting in with your coworkers or colleagues, find some sort of activity that you like. There are intramural sports in Seattle. There are always art classes or like days at the art museum, for example. So you have to find something that you like, find a friend group where you can make a connection and then get into that friend group. But it can be difficult in Seattle. There's definitely a Seattle freeze. It's hard because in the winter, when it is more rainy and gray, a lot of people want to stay inside. They don't want to go out as much. It's more difficult to get yourself out you got to take your vitamin D and make sure that you are getting as much as possible so that you are happy and want to go out and see other people but the Seattle freeze is real it's hard to overcome but you can definitely do it you have to put yourself out there and find that group that you can make your way into there you have it. Those are the pros and cons of living in Seattle, Washington. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you're thinking about moving to Seattle or you want to talk more about what the culture is like, I'm always here. There's a link in the description here where you can book time directly on my calendar or you can send me a message. I'm always more than happy to help you. If you're thinking about buying or selling in Seattle, I want to be your favorite realtor in the city. So don't hesitate to reach out. I hope you found this video helpful and I hope that that you are considering Seattle as a place for your next destination.